Uh, let's go back to Suzanne O'Halloran. She joins me now from the newsroom with more on how the market's been reacting to this. Suzanne? Thanks, Mark. You know, it appears traders are taking this quake in stride. I want to point out the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We are marching back up to pretty much where we were before when we got those headlines about that 5.8 magnitude quake in Virginia. Another important point to point out when we look at the markets, we have 10 of the 10 S&P sectors maintaining their gains. Energy stocks still are your number one performer. They have been for most of the day. That's very encouraging. We did not see investors do a massive shift of asset rotation on those headlines. Again, they are taking these headlines, which are clearly very serious in stride here as we continue to report the details. I also just want to mention the price of oil as well, because we are continuing to see oil pick up steam. We have oil up uh, at $85, up over a dollar. So again, investors comfortable taking on those risky assets despite headlines of that quake. And we are continuing uh, to cover some headlines, Mark, that some buildings in the Philadelphia area, for example, are being evacuated as a safety precaution. Uh, another thing I want to point out to just give you a sense of risk in the market is the price of gold. Gold actually picking up uh, even more selling when we look at a gold chart. Gold actually down $44 at 1847 Again, as we look at gold on days when there is a lot of volatility, we tend to see some buying in a safety, uh, in a safer asset like gold. We are not seeing that today. And in fact, the selling continues continued for gold after we got headlines of that quake. And every time we talk about fear, especially over the past few weeks, we like to give a quick check on the VIX index because this measures fear as well. We're not seeing a whole lot of movement in the VIX as well. The VIX basically uh, was bouncing along the bottom today. We're at 39. We're still there. We saw a modest tick higher, Mark, when we got those headlines about the quake, but no real action. Investors should take comfort in that, that we are not seeing uh, any type of panic selling, if you will. Investors, again, taking the news of of the earthquake on the East Coast, which, as you mentioned, very unusual. I happened to be on the phone uh, with a contact over at Lightspeed Trading. Uh, they, too, were surprised. Their building in Times Square uh, actually shook. But again, Mark, the market's marching back to the highs of the day. That is good news and comforting for those investors. Mark. Suzanne O'Halloran joining me from the newsroom. Suzanne, thanks. Let's go to our senior markets correspondent, Julie Hyman. Julie Hyman joins me with a guest on the phone. Julie? That's right. Uh, I hooked up with uh, Hampton Bargatze. He's a sales manager in fixed income at BB&T down in Richmond. We've been talking to folks all over the East Coast, but Richmond, obviously, the closest large city to where this quake actually took place, about 40 miles west of Richmond, Virginia. Hampton, thank you so much uh, for talking to us. Uh, talk to me about what happened, what it was like down there, how much shaking did you feel, and did you realize it was an earthquake right away? We, we just felt the, uh, felt the building shake for about 30 seconds and uh, you know couldn't quite figure it out until it was pretty much done and uh, a little, probably more drama after the fact than, than during the actual quake. And did you all uh, evacuate the building? Did you get any direction from the, the building manager? No, we, we had some people walking out, but uh, no, no evacuation. Do you see a lot of people on the streets there in Richmond? Or do people seem, seem concerned that uh, there may be aftershocks at all? We're we're kind of looking. We don't really look at the at the center of the city. We're kind of look out over the uh, over the James River. Uh, there are some people out on the on the on the front side of our building, but um, you know we're we're, we're kind of uh, we're not really seeing a whole lot from where we stand right now. And you all are in the sort of the newer part of Richmond. You're in a newer uh, building, correct? As opposed to sort of the the older part of Richmond, the Capitol building, et cetera, which potentially might not be as prepared for something like this. Correct. So are you, are you hearing anything there locally about what may be going on in other parts of the city? We haven't heard anything. We've, um, you know, we, we've kind of get some, get some phone calls from, from friends and, and family, but uh, have, have been nothing. We haven't heard of any, any real problems anywhere or any damage anywhere. I'm also curious about what's been going on with the phone lines. We've had some reports of phone lines being tied up, either mobile or in some cases the landlines. As you say, is a lot of people have been calling around to try and figure out if, if everybody's okay. What's been your experience on that front? We've had, we've had no issues here. And you guys obviously are on a landline. That's how I reached you as well. So is it, I mean, at the end of the day, is it pretty much business as usual? Have you resumed what you were doing before? We are we are back to uh, back to business as usual. Still uh, still fielding some phone calls, some people uh, checking on us, but yeah, we are uh, right back to normal. Well, Hampton, thank you so much for your time again. Um, he is down there in Richmond at the BB&T building. Hampton Bargatze is a sales manager in fixed income at BB&T.
Mark? Julie, thanks so much. Let's get right back to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Matt Miller is standing by with a guest. Matt? Hey, hey, Mark, thanks. I want to just point out real quickly that we have bounced back to sort of pre-earthquake levels here on the floor, a gain of about 205 points in the Dow, 11,059. The S&P back up through that 1145 uh, level. The technical analysts were watching as, as an upper range. Now we're looking at 1148, 1149 there, a gain of about 2.2 percent. So real rally on the S&P. And then NASDAQ, the big gainer at 3 percent, with 2415 being the level. A lot of the tech stocks are gaining today. Apple, Microsoft. Microsoft, IBM, you name it, uh, JDS, Uniphase, Amazon, they're up across the board. I'm sitting here with the trader, uh, Todd Schoenberger from Land Cold Trading, normally based in Philadelphia, and you said guys in your office in Philly felt that's this right. as well. That's right. I was having lunch, and I got a couple of calls, and I, that's how I heard the news first. Then I looked it up, and I heard it was a 5.8, 5.9 out of Virginia. So it definitely impacted our offices in Philadelphia. We're in Center City, right next to City Hall, around right 2 South Broad, and that building felt it, and that's a 30-story building. So, so and then walking back from getting your slice of pizza here in New York down William Street you saw that people were starting to flood out of the buildings Times. down down in the financial Thousands. district here yes. evacuated but obviously it hasn't uh, affected trading at all I mean here in the New York Stock Exchange everything is running smoothly and with the exception of probably a flurry of emails about the earthquake well it impacted us at the beginning obviously there was a there was a concern there wondering if the NYSE was going to be evacuated so traders were, were obviously scurrying as far as getting their orders and what they needed to do however now we've rebounded right now as it clear Clearly, this thing has, has been taken care of, whatever it was, whatever caused it, and there is obviously no, uh, no sudden damage that we need to worry about here on the floor. So all the trading is going as business as Definitely, I was talking with officials in charge of the systems here at the NYSC, and they're saying everything's running smoothly, everything's in perfect working order. They did not evacuate the 6th uh, and 17th floors, had been reported uh, earlier, so everything right. here is fine. Let me ask you about trading in general, because it's a fairly sizable rally now, 200-point gain on the Dow, 2% on the S&P, but why? Are people expecting something from Ben Bernanke? That's one part. Libya is another part. It's a new facelift for the Middle East, so we have to consider that. Also, keep something in mind. Yesterday, we closed where we were two weeks ago, so now from a technical standpoint, you were really looking for that pop at the open right now. We clearly have been there all day, but the real hint right now is looking for something out of Bernanke on Friday. If we don't see it, you may want to end up thinking of sewing into this strength. We've been short. We're still short, and we're not going to start covering now because we won't have to just yet, but we think that Friday is going to be a big disappointment for investors. You think, and you know, everyone I'm talking to on the floor lately has been saying, look, we're not going to get anything from Bernanke on Friday, and yet yeah. people say this rally is mainly due to that, right? So what do right. you think we'll actually hear from the chairman? Look, he can't say very much right now because the macroeconomic data is not poor enough right now for Congress to make a move. Remember, Congress and the FOMC are very reactive, not proactive. So they're not going to go right out and start doing something unless they need to be. And keep in mind, we have to be seriously stuck in quicksand. I mean, you're looking at a real recession taking place before Congress is going to let the chairman and the FOMC do any type of quantitative easing. Do you see that real recession taking place? I mean, yes. You are short right now, right? Yes. You're going to go short into the Jackson Hole speech. Do, yeah. you, do you see the U.S. economy contracting? The Rich Amarone, one of your economists, brought up a great point. You look back in 1948, the very first year that the government could come out with a gross domestic product reading. We, any time, the year-over-year -year number dipped below 2%, this country country always ends up in a recession. It is a 100 percent perfect barometer. Right now it's at 1.6 percent. What do you think, though, Todd, about the markets? I was talking to Mark Newton over here at Gray Wolf Execution, and he was saying there hasn't been a down year for the markets in a pre-election year since 1939. So things would have to be very bad for us to get a down year in the market and, this year. And historically speaking, the third year of a presidential term is always the best year, especially in the first term. So you have to think that, yes, we should be up 19 percent on average if you just look back at the last 50 years. We're not even close to that right now. But this is not a, the typical time, a normal period right now. So you have to wonder, what is the Fed going to do? Remember, he already promised us a zero interest rates for two years. There's a not, a lot, not a lot he can do. Last summer, we were fighting deflation. Now you have inflation concerns. So what do you do? You got the pop-up rates if you want to fight that. But yet again, if he starts printing money, now you have more of an inflation Hands risk. Are a little bit tied. I hey, would say so. Todd, thanks so much for joining right, us. Todd Schoenberger you, from Landcolt Trading. Joining us on the floor. Uh, so, Mark, obviously, the Earth Earthquake has caused some commotion. People are talking about it a lot. There's a lot of people down here in the financial districts out in the street, but it hasn't stopped trading and it hasn't held us back from a 2% rally here.